And if you, uh, if you would like to, please indicate by uh, showing me your yes. Okay, so yeah, this is pretty typical for me, and, and this is, you know, I've worked with this quite often, but it, it you know, um, uh, let's see, can you show me your no? Okay, thank you. Um, so the problem for me was, I was sure, I was always sure I was holding my hand still, but I thought, well, what if I'm not holding my hand still? So this, <coughs> this is, this is um, personally for me, I use this mostly to speak with my spirit guide. I just found that I'm more attracted to this now to speak with my spirit guide, and I use my dowsing rods to have everyday conversations. So a little bit about how to use the dowsing rods and what they do, and then you guys are going to get your own ones to practice with. But... Um, there's two different kinds, or three different kinds actually. Maybe you guys have seen the Y, the ones that are one handle, Y, not Y, but Y, the Y handle, um, used for dousing for water and things like that. They're not as useful for talking with spirits because I don't know how you would understand the reaction except if it's pulling you someplace. Now there's free swinging ones, which I don't want to poke you guys, there's free swinging ones, and I thought that these were the only ones I could use until I tried somebody else's who aren't free swinging, and you can literally feel them moving in your hands. But I still like these because then I am absolutely sure I am not touching the rods. Now, you, there's several different answers you can get. Still state a yes and no, please. But there's still different answers you can get with this. I've learned from using them. So generally, unless you're Native American, and for some reason in the Native American world, um, it's opposite. But generally, yes, the uh, rods are crossed. And no, the rods are wide open. And somebody, thank you, is helping me demonstrate. A lot of times, no answers for me are just, and they're showing you just straight ahead. Nothing's going on. Um, can you please show them a hug? Can you please hug me? Oh, come on, I'm not that stinky. I took a shower. All the way. Okay, I don't know why the right hand isn't doing it, but generally, this is a hug. When, you get, when somebody hugs you, and you get that a lot from kids, or somebody that likes you. You know, when, I, when, when you leave today, I'm going to give you a hug. So that's, that's the kind of thing. Um, can you please show thank you? Okay, now this is one of the most amazing things. The reason is, is you can't, you, when you get your dowsing rods in your hand, you try to physically do what I just did. Purposely do it. Not a question, but for you to physically make those touch. So thank you for showing them that. But that is thank you. So a lot of times after an interview, I'll say thank you and they'll say thank you. Okay. Now here's something else I've learned with the dowsing rods because I was getting very confused at my house. Long story short, I have a flight crew that comes through on the way to Wally's. They're not all, I don't know how many are all there, but they come by. She for, lives in Genoa. Oh, I live in Genoa, yeah. So um, they come by for coffee. I also have a stagecoach driver. I have four children that come by, uh, generally stay there now of all different ages. Um, I have, I've, at times, a Union soldier. And now I've, I have Miss Lillian from the Pink House <laughs> who is instructing the children. One child has stayed with me since I lived in Alameda about 20 years ago. 
He takes care of the bunnies. That is his primary interest. But now I have different children. So I don't know why, but I have this little reading nook. And so I'll sit there and talk to them in the morning sometimes. Not every morning. I found that Lillian was offended when I didn't ask her for coffee. But when I, and then she wanted a special cup, so now we've worked that out. <laughs> but what I do is, is I pour a half a cup of coffee for the men. They get, they get an older cup. Lillian gets a nicer cup. Coffee. She doesn't like mugs. She doesn't like mugs, yeah. That's exactly it. She went ahead and went for a pretty one a until I got a teacup just recently. And then let be Polly. <laughs> what did happen? Yeah, but, but you know, but you know what I tried to use a Fire King mug that I used for the guys. And she no. Because the guys used it. So I feel half cup, but there's some of the guys who want cream and sugar, and I tell you, I don't take cream and sugar, so I tell them it's in the kitchen. Because who has to drink that coffee afterwards? I do. I don't waste it. I don't throw it out. It's intent, but they're very happy. So anyway, long story short, that's the ghosts in my house. And they're all friendly, and I love them. You know, and, and um, they're my muses sometimes. Lillian helped me do a performance as Lillian Virgin. And I have a, a stagecoach driver that helps me when I do Charlie Parker's. So it's all good. But I have conversations with them. And with that many ghosts around, or people, spirits, friends, I need to know who I'm talking to, and I like to know where to look, because the thing that's made me feel weird, where Sandy, you know, is completely different, she, she can look and she knows exactly where she's talking <laughs> to somebody. I don't know where they're at. So I'll say, can you please show me where you're standing? Okay, the one that was helping me is standing right there. So in the morning, I say, um, just to double check, sometimes myself, I'll say, you know, Amy, can you please show me where you're at? And I'll get this. Consistently, you guys, consistently, my different spirits are always in the same place. Here's something interesting, Arlene. Amy was always here mm -hmm. when Lillian came, and I asked Lillian if she wanted to help instruct the children because they needed something to do besides play the next morning. And Lillian was right. Lillian's always right here. Amy was right there. And Amy's like five. And so all of a sudden, she's Miss, Miss Lillian. But she was she, now she moved over next to her, so that was fun. So anyway, if we need to use these, and you, you, you've you determined that you're talking to somebody, ask them to please show you where they're standing, and they'll show you. And then I asked Sandy, I had this one problem where, you know, I, I was watching the rods, I was sitting there just thinking of something else and not even ha having a question, and the rods were drifting independently. So I said, uh, is somebody trying to ask me a question? And then they stopped, and I said, and again, I'm using my intuition. I'm starting to get used to my intuition. So the next question that came to my mind was, oh, are you talking amongst yourselves? Yes. And so with these rods, too, um, Lillian is very proper, and when she was trying to let me know mm -hmm. that she didn't really like the cup, I'd say, you know, do you like the cup I gave you? Kind of like this. When I got her a new cup, I said, is this a better cup? <laughs> yeah. So to different degrees, like she just was very polite. She didn't want to tell me that I really messed up, you know. So, you know, pay attention to the strength because sometimes they'll just bang. Now, we get into situations where the ghosts are having fun or their kids or I don't know what. We haven't, or they're dancing. We haven't determined exactly what this is, but quite often to me, if I hold a when I'll spin. They'll just spin and spin and spin. Now that's joy, happiness, whatever, playing, dancing, okay? Where you have a problem is if you get this. This is not a hug. This. Or just ch ch. Okay, end the interview because that person's angry for whatever reason. Just end, say, I'm I, I'm ending this interview. <coughs> so these are all the fun things you can do with these. And, and you know, if, if it's your tool, if you get into this tool, play around with it. But use your intuition. So the other thing that I do with this, and this gets distracting, so we're just going to do a little bit of it. Uh, entertain it. It's, it's called a ghost radar. And what it is, it's an app on the phone that works basically like an obelisk. So you can hear the words that the ghosts are saying. And don't ask me how they design this stuff, but it works. I would not sit here and use it alone because it's not going to make sense. So you go back to using things in conjunction. Um, I don't know if anybody's going to speak now, but I'll tell you a little bit about how I used it. I would have it on one day and I heard words like cold, this, that, this, that, and none of it made sense. So I picked up my dousing rods and I said, is somebody here who's you know trying to tell me this? This is how I found the flight crew, is I was hearing, you know, pool, 
and uh, things that had to do with an airplane or, or you know stuff like that. And then they were. I said, "Where where are you?" Well, they kept pointing over towards where I where I'm sitting. Wally is 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 to my right, and Wally's is south of me. So by doing over a period of days, and I, I would check with Sandy on this too, over a period of days, I had these people between the words that were coming through and using this and where they were pointing and doing a little bit of research, which Sandy's ex-husband uh, used to actually um, use those barracks that were in Carson City, we determined that there was a crew of men that would come from where the, the Quonset hut is, the Quonset hut or, or those buildings in Carson City over by the church when you come up over the hill. Um, before you go into Carson Valley, they, Sandy came over and with her psychic ability talked to these people too. And we determined there's a road that they said is no longer being used that they would come and travel over and they would go to Wally's, um, all, you know, that was part of their regiment when they were, um, they, they were stationed there. And so, you know, it, it takes a while sometimes to put a story together, but what fun! I'm happy to serve them coffee now that I know who they are, you know. So this, anyway, this is a fun way to use it. So, um, oh, I guess I didn't get the app going. There we go. Okay, so what this does, and this is, a, uh, I think, a 99-cent download on your phone, is I have it set to medium. This will not only show where a spirit is by a color of a, of a dot or an orb. Oh, I don't have the sound on because we're, okay, heat. So don't know what the heat is about. But um, sometimes if it's red, yellow, blue, that's the intensity of where they're at and you'll get words. This, this also has a place where it will record all the words, so you can go back and see those words in line, okay, and see if you can put something together. You can email them to Sandy and say, Sandy, what do you make of this? Um, they're being pretty, see? Pan. So I don't know what pan means. You know, we'll, we'll get a few more words. And if somebody has, an, you know, an idea, now people are starting to join the party. But if, you know, after a few words, if somebody has an idea, then you can pick up your dowsing rod and say, are you talking about the pans in the kitchen, you know? No, they're talking about panning like in cameras. Oh, okay. See? No, then it helps to have Sandy. I don't have her there every morning. So anyway, fun, fun, fun. So now, does everybody want to try uh, dowsing rods? Okay. Sure. We have all different kinds of sizes right here. Uh -huh. um, you could even try, Carolyn has made these. Give these a try. These here, there's all different all right. kinds of sizes that you can take those home with you. Okay. So, yeah. And then, um, so there's, there's long ones. Oh, I have oh, these here good. you can try. And two, now, if you would like to, oh, also, if you want to yeah, there's long use ones. these, there's you can come ones. on over here and look Medium. at some of the devices and things that we have on the table. Um, I like, like the ones that have no ornamentation. No handles, no nothing. Oh, okay. Those oh, are great. I don't have any. We don't have any of those. those. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so we, we just have the free screen. I do, screen. but I didn't bring them with me. <laughs> oh, really? Okay. Do you, you want to try, try it? One? You want to try these? Or? I've yeah, done it, and they just oh, don't work. Oh, okay. All righty. Could I get by, please? Sure. Yeah, there's I have a... to go to the necessary room. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're stuck necessary there. Yeah. Yeah. Make sure you know, try and make sure visually from where you're standing they're as balanced as they can be. And on the back here. Can you touch your hands? I was trying to touch my hands together because I'm feeling a little tremulous. Uh, no, you probably shouldn't. But you should try to um, maybe shoulder width apart. Okay. Yeah, shoulder width apart. And you can, you don't have to hold them up here or here. I mean, I, I generally will just, you know, hold them relaxed like this. You can hold them out or relaxed. And just, you know, ask some questions. Yes or no questions. First ask if there's anybody here who wants to talk with you. I'm answer I'm asking in my head and you can, Yeah. Yeah, that's another thing. Um you don't have <laughs> I've been asking all kinds of spirits to show up. Thank you. Yeah. You know, yeah. That's you know cool. this is something I've learned. I, I always okay. learn by trial and error and then I call mm -hmm. Sandy. Well, well I'm at home, my husband's sleeping. I don't want to sit me out there. Nora too. I asked everybody come on show okay. up today, so <laughs> But I, you're getting a yes, or actually, she's, she's trying to get a thank, thank you. I'm yeah. not trying to do anything. Yeah, see, and you, <laughs> you, you couldn't physically do that if you wanted to. I'm not to. moving. Yeah. I'm not moving my hands. But, you know, I'm at home one night, oh, my, my husband's sleeping, he goes to bed really early, and, I, and it's a small house, and I didn't want to be out there going, hello, da 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 da, da. So <laughs> I started, you know, just, to, I, I gave it a try, because I knew I could do that with my pendulum. So I just, I in, in my head, I asked a question, and it responded. So you know something? 
if you're if you've got people in the house and you're just a little bit tentative about speaking out loud, you can s just ask them in your head. You're finding that out right that now. Already, yeah. Boy, look at that getting a tip. Oh, that's so fun. Look at that. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's oh. awesome. Is this a yes? That is a thank you. Kind of like more of a greeting or a salutation, where like these oh, here they're yes. crossing. So you can talk to them in your head, you know, ask them questions like like uh, um, Sharon's doing, uh, Sharon, right? You know, okay, like Sharon's all in doing, Sharon, yeah. Yeah, all in Sharon, and then, this is my yes. Oh, but I am Native American on my mother's side. I am. Oh, okay. <laughs> we said they were the opposites. So yeah. awesome. Uh, so. Okay. Oh, oh, you know something? If you also, you know, sometimes now they what get they're doing is they're with hers, they're pointing. Now, Carolyn's been hearing an awful lot of things in this kitchen. I have a lot of ghosts in the kitchen that throw things. And so that's interesting that yours are pointing. Hers have been pointing into the kitchen. So I always have a ghost that's cooking in the kitchen or doing something mm -hmm. in there. So uh, that's interesting. And, and, you know, and sometimes the, the pores, they just get stuck. You know, they get stuck on what they're saying. And you're asking questions and they're, they're staying like this. You know, all you have to do is do this. Shake them out oh, and then right. start again. Get them off, you know, you know, like somebody who gets stuck on a subject. Right. You know, just get them off the subject. Mm -hmm. You know, just go go like that, you know. And then I have mornings where, you know, we've had long conversations with everybody there, and then all of a sudden everybody's gone. <laughs> you know, there's just the kids are left to talk to. So you'll find that out when, when these don't move, you know. But yeah, de definitely, you know, kind of shake Always them shake out. them out, yeah. That way it gives them brand new something to say yes or no to. Mm -hmm. Gets their energy off in case somebody else wants to talk. Sometimes you might have three or four people that are just, you know, taking their turns wanting to talk. Or, oh, yes, oh, yes, we've had that. <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, I want to talk. I want to talk to Sandy. <laughs> you know, we get, we get that all you. the time, you know. <laughs> and I get that sometimes in the morning when I get it gets a little crowded. And that one, I have a little reading nook that is you know, no wider than, than this area here, and it gets a little crowded. Because, well, I want to, I want to tell her this, you know. <laughs> so just say, hey, say, one at a time, folks. If you ever encounter that, say, well, one at a time, please. Because remember, you're talking to a person. You know, you're talking to people. Anyway, these are beautiful. Yeah, you made beautiful. these? Mm -hmm. Oh, these are beautiful. Yeah, right. I have a friend who made those for me. I was going to say the girly girl in me loves the little, the, <laughs> the jewels. Yeah, my nice. my uh, favorite. These are copper. My favorite. Yes, yeah, wow. copper is a good conductor. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and this copper is actually antique. Um, it has marks on. I can't see it without my glasses it on. But it has. It's. It came from. I forget where Ron found it, but it's it's old, old, old. They're from the 1930s. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then my uh, favorite um, jewel is an amethyst, and then my t one of my totems are bunnies. So a friend made those for me. She makes them too, and uh, Carolyn obviously makes them. And then a uh, gal up in um, Virginia City lost her name that has the, ch the blue house. Ellen? Ellen, yeah. No. Ellen, Ellen makes them too, and Ellen makes both kinds, but she makes the one that Arlene's, Arlene likes to use that they don't, they're not free swinging. But some about those is like, I thought, oh no, I can't use those because, yeah. you know, I, I, I wouldn't know. You see, you see them move in your hands. You know, so if you get the opportunity, definitely try the, the non-free swinging ones and don't be afraid to, because I thought, oh, you know, I wouldn't be able to do those. So it, it's fun to see, you know. So anyway, that's, that's dousing rods, and, and that is my presentation on how to work with tools and, and how to have fun, and it's just like a big party with everybody. But, uh, you know, intuition. You know, not everybody's going to be nice and happy. Some people, you know, not only are they only, are they only going to be grumpy, you know, SOBs, but there are going to be ones that are just sad sacks. And, you know, I forget the last time, oh, oh, when we were on our investigation in one of the rooms. We had a, I had a guy in a room that I was staying at. We later, uh, the, the hotel later verified that a man had committed suicide in that room and died of a heart attack, excuse me. But he came through in the morning, and we were having this conversation, and he was just Mr. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> you know, and I finally told him, I said, you know something, can I come back and talk to you later? I've got some things to do. You know, and then he didn't want to talk to me. But you don't have to talk to those people either. It's just like in everyday life. You know, if somebody's going to be really, you know, woe is me, don't talk to them. You know, if you can't help them. You go ahead and sit down again. I'm going to just talk for a couple Mr. more minutes Tesla, here. Right? Then we are going to have you all come over here Tesla? and get snackies and... <laughs> 
Oh, yes. Mr. All the way down the hall, turn right, and you'll see that. Okay. There you go. I just, I, Mr. Tesla. Uh, oh. Tell me. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm going to eat. Mr. Tesla, <laughs> oh, Nikolai it, Tesla, was very, very instrumental in anything electricity, and I think, and don't quote me on this, I'd have to look it up. Uh, I think he invented AC, DC power, or whatever. He was even better than, um, uh, oh, what's his name? Edison? Uh, yeah, Edison. Edison. Oh, Edison was on the bottom of the totem pole. But Nikolai Tesla, he is just, he's one of my heroes the whole bit. And uh, I've never had it where somebody has come through that much that he hangs around you, he likes you. I don't know what it is, but the two guys up in Tahoe and... Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or when, you, when you get a chance, uh, look, just key in Tesla uh, in the, um, on Google. Not, mm -hmm. the, not they're doing the automatic electric cars now. But that man is just, he's on the top of my radar. I don't do anything electrical or anything, but he just, is letting me know he's he's there half the time because everybody usually like Mr. Convoy and all of them are so low key but he hangs around you. They just did a uh, something about him on the Hotel Mysteries. Yeah, I saw that. Did you get to see? It? That was yeah, very fascinating. Thank you. He's he's a very very interesting person, and thank you. Mm -hmm. the, uh, there was a great presentation. Um, series on the History Channel um, on uh, how, uh, most important movers and shakers or whatever mm -hmm. and um, it was one of the, it was a real top-notch presentation with reenactment and everything and they just I well they did it a couple years ago but I just saw it again and about you know three weeks ago or something it was on the History Channel so you can look that up too if you have um, well Sandy Roku the History Channel came up and interview Christine they're doing a little thing on Mark Twain about the duel that never was and between mm. uh, Christine and I we spent like about six hours getting all the stuff ready about uh, uh, all these different things in the whole bit and they didn't bother using hardly anything at all they took a couple of pictures of uh, Mark Twain's Derringer and the whole bit and I got the same feeling and I told Christine I says you're gonna spend a lot of time we're going to do all this research, and they're going to come on. They're going to wham, 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 and the whole bit. It's like the dead files. So it's going to be interesting they to see what they their own. see no. what they what interpretation they come up with. Mark Twain and the duel that never was. Oh wow! With William Wright. Mm -hmm. That's a funny story, though. <laughs> yeah, it is. It really great. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Well, just for some some common things that. You can just find these, really, all in your your house to communicate with ghosts. Spirits love to move things, so find things for them to move. Like uh, Kim was saying with the, the wind chimes, um, we've got the uh, used balloons, like outside, little toys. We got balls, this doesn't light up anymore, but it used to light up. Kids love to move things. Kids will move things before adults will. Matchbox cars, balls. Um, marbles, uh, well, the candle flame, she said, uh, salt and pepper, you know, and flour, put mm -hmm. things down so they'll walk through it or, or move things around. Um, curled up pieces of paper, cards, anything that's very lightweight, go ahead and put those down um, because spirits love to move them. But one thing that's very important to do is when you put down your, your puff balls in a line or a circle, Take a picture, okay, note the time, okay, and then come back, and however long you want to come back, and if something's moved, take another picture. That way you have the before and after, and note the time too. You were gone 10 minutes or 10 hours, okay? That, um, yeah, and, and it's real fun to, um, to give them candy, little, little things of candy, you know, a little wrap candy for them. <laughs> they love that. They love that. Nerf balls, flags, pennant, pennies, coins, light up toys. Anything like this, anything that you have in your house, it's a ghost toy. Okay? Then you get with uh, like with the balls, 
you get with the, the cards, um, puff balls, dousing rods, uh, yarn. Um, then you get into the higher tech with the ovalis, the recorders, the digital cameras, the video cameras, the flashlights, even use flashlights to communicate with them. Use gauss meters. Um, this is called a ghost meter. And when a ghost is around, it will, will make that sound. And you'll see the, 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 the lever here move back and forth. Try not to get these things around electrical outlets because that's what they're for. Uh, communicate with these. We've communicated with many spirits. We'll have this on. It's like, is there somebody here? And they'll go, well, they'll just say beep, beep, or beep, beep, beep. There's a um, fellow over at the um, St. Charles Hotel here in town. That's our second home. I just love that place. <laughs> and so his name is Phil. We call him Mean Phil because he hates women and he pulls your hair. Okay. <laughs> and so we, I love to communicate with him with this because it's kind of his way of cussing at me. You know, I'll say, hi, Phil, are you here? And he'll go, beep, 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 beep. You can just tell he's not liking me because he doesn't like me anyway because I can see him. So, but it's a lot of fun to communicate um, with everything. The most simplest up to the, you know, the high tech. It's fun to communicate. I know that, that Kim mentioned that I don't really need the toys because I see the toys are fun. They're fun to have fun with the spirits. Now, I love the dousing rods because even though I can see the spirits, I, I can stand here all day and say, there's a ghost there, there's a ghost there, and you're all going to go, oh. But if I use my dousing rods, you'll see, yeah, there's one there. And oh, yeah, maybe over there. You'll see what I'm communicating, who I'm communicating, why I'm communicating with someone. So it's, a, it's very important to just have your case full of all kinds of fun stuff so you can use them, so you can see the ghost move things, so you can hear the ghost move things. And then, we had this already, but I didn't move the paper up. The dousing rods, the recorders, okay? You like my pictures? I mean, that's like true art, isn't it? <laughs> I like the ghost. That's yeah. <laughs> Dousing rods, I have to admit, are, well, I can't talk for Carolyn and Kim, but to me, dousing rods are the best communicative tool, okay? Next is like cameras, and next is like the recorders, all very important, but dousing rods is because when we have you go on a ghost hunt later on in my house here, because I've tried to summon as many spirits as I can, you will like what you did here. You them moving and that's cool and there's been times too where um, we have run into um, at the old washer club many 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 years ago I was in there and we were in I don't know if you even get to it now but anyway we were way in the back and uh, there was this man uh, I was an old miner I guess and he was sitting there and we we're talking to him and only one of the dousing rods was moving he said how come you can only excuse me so how come you can only move one of the dowsing rods? And he said, because I was shot in the arm. And he didn't have an arm. He had to amputate it. It's like, cool. But it's like, okay, let's take that one step further. You're a spirit. Yes, I'm a spirit. You've got two arms. Yes, I do. How come you can't use that arm? <laughs> you should be okay with it. It goes, it's still shot. It's still off. I can't use it. It's like, okay, well, we can just use one. Well, that's cool. You're going to run into all kinds of interesting things with the dowsing rods. Um, as, a, as a matter of fact, you can find out people's disabilities with the dowsing rods. Many years ago, I went into uh, Dayton at the Odeon Saloon. Upstairs, oh, my, my telephone. Upstairs, you've got, uh, it's a stage. They have uh, meetings and plays and things up there. Well, we ran into a woman up there, um, and, I, and only one was moving, and I asked her, I said, you know, there's something not right with your arm. Can you please tell? Oh, totally offended her. She had polio, okay, and so her arm was not working. And I totally offended her. She was gone in a matter of a nanosecond. And I said, oh, I'm so sorry. You're going to run into things like that, too. Another thing with dousing rods that are really cool, 
uh, about a year ago, we had the neatest, neatest, neatest um, uh, investigation up at a church in Virginia City. And the rods were going like this. It's like, what in the world's going on? And they were being pulled down. I went, oh, yeah. okay, oh, we're talking to a kid. Get down to their level, okay? Kid, little kids, they can't reach up. They have to, so get down to their level, okay? And it, it's a lot of fun. You're going to find out when you use these. Well, they're just a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> just a lot of fun. On the last investigation, um, Kim was using her rods, and one on the left side was being moved most, and we asked why, and the spirit said, because I'm standing over there. So... <laughs> Good point. Uh, Very you know, good point. Not that his left arm wasn't working, right. but he was standing over there. So <laughs> I forgot about that. That's a good yeah. point. That's a good point. Is there a history on the dowsing rods? How long have they been used? The Y-shaped, the ones that you know, you have two handles and it goes out. Mm -hmm. They've used that for centuries and millennia to find they call water. It water witching. Mm -hmm. Yeah, water right. witching. Yeah, I know. Mm -hmm. Right. And so. I'm not quite sure. That's that would be a good thing to research. I don't know when the L shape came into being, and I don't know when they started using it for as a tool for communicating with ghosts. I need to research that. That's a really good question. It's interesting, to but me, mm -hmm. because I'm sure they're kind of ancient too. I'm sure I'm that sure they are. I know the the water witches are millennia, millennia. Old. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, my father has actually watched a water witch work, and he says I can't explain it, but it works every time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they're paid to come out and find water. In mm -hmm. fact, I think he used one on some property. Oh, wow. Land, so. That's impressive. Yeah, I've seen them that just like on... years ago. Yeah, too, so. I've just seen things like on YouTube or whatever that, you know, they're just walking, whoop, you know, it bends down and they dig and there's and there water. Uh-huh. It's That's impressive. That's where the well yeah. is on the property now. Mm -hmm. oh, how interesting. Mm -hmm. Isn't that fun? Wind chimes? I mean, just anything, anything. You can use, like I said, anything in your home. All the way up to high tech stuff. If you want to go out and get all the, you know, ten thousand dollars surveillance cameras, would you come along with us on your investigation? Okay, yeah. so we can do that. Too. <laughs> <You're lying. laughs> so if you'd like to come on up, um, we've got a conglomeration of all kinds of of different things. Um, you can use the. You want to turn your Opalus on, and then um, and maybe your phone. Maybe we'll get some communications going between the, okay. the spirits here. Um, you can look and see what we've got. Digital tape recorders are good, but you know what? I still use my old tape recorders. This happens to be a, a mini tape recorder, but I've got one of the big old honking, you know, 1970 tape recorder. I still use those to um, turn it on and to try and get EVP, go speak, okay? okay so, so what is EVP? Electronic oh, voice? EVP is electronic voice phenomenon. And what that is is ghost speak. A lot of times, I, I believe that you were touching on that, if you have your recorder, you listen back and all of a sudden you hear a, a growl or a sigh, that's the, the spirits are trying to communicate with you. Now many, many times, um, you'll hear words, you know, you'll say, uh, is there a spirit here with me? And you'll hear, yes, <laughs> okay, it's really cool to hear them speak to you. They are on electric frequency. I mean, what better way, an electric frequency for them to communicate with you. So sure. Um, there are, I believe it's in the book here, there's oh, what is there, seven main types of EVP, electronic voice phenomena, where it starts out with a sigh and a growl. Um, some of them will um, sound like they're underwater. Okay, some of them will, um, oh gosh, what's another one? They'll talk to you like, um, I, if rhyme isn't the, the correct word, but they talk to you like, um, you're asking the question and they give you a different word that could mean the same thing. And then like, like Kim was touching on, it's like, oh wow, you're really getting some people there. Like Kim was touching on, they'll start talking to you about yourself. You know, hi, uh, what do you look like? Are you heavy say you have long hair? Uh, wait a minute, that's me. You know, so they'll, they'll say things like that that they're describing you instead of themselves. Okay, um, there's also some that, uh, be prepared for this. This happens to me an awful lot. Being there, on, the spirits are on a different frequency 
They will talk so fast you cannot decipher what they're saying. Okay? I mean, literally, they talk just like that. So, if you have a program where you can slow up the, the speak, then you'll be able to hear them. If not, it's just, you know, Mickey Mouse type of stuff. Okay, yeah. But they talk so fast, or they'll talk over each other. Okay. Um, a lot of times what uh, we call a intelligent haunting. Oh, we didn't touch on that. No, we there's didn't. Some, there's, there's a couple of types, types of, of hauntings. A uh, couple of, of uh, types of hauntings. First is a residual. And that is like I'm sure that you've probably seen millions of times on TV. Let's say Gettysburg is a good, uh, a good example. You'll see a soldier walking from this rock to this tree. And then a couple of minutes later, you'll see the same soldier walking from this rock to this tree. A residual means they're in a loop. Like a you know, broken record or your record, it just it gets stuck there. It just plays the same sound. Okay, that is, they, they really don't know. The spirits don't know how to communicate with you. They're kind of stuck in their own little world. They just move from the rock to the tree over and over. Then we have intelligent. Now this is where you get the communications with them. Intelligent spirits will communicate with you. They will move the dowsing rods. They'll show up on video flying by. They'll show up on your cameras or they will move the dowsing rods. They'll, they'll uh, have ghost speak on recorders. Those are intelligent. They want to communicate with you. They see you. They know you can see them or feel them or sense them. And that is called an intelligent haunting. And that's where the communication devices are awesome tools. Awesome tools. So. Carson Mall. We'd love to have you come and visit us. And today we're going to talk about <laughs> Kim's historical love <laughs> of the Sierra Nevada area and especially around Genoa. And I understand that you have lived in this area over half your life? Yeah, over half my life, Pauline. And thank you for having me on the show. You have a beautiful shop. Thank you. Um, yeah, I was born and uh, raised for a bit at Donner Lake, uh, California, and then moved to the San Francisco Bay Area to finish up school. And then eventually, after about a decade, I began working my way back, you know, uh, through different venues and uh, ended up in the last three years coming over the hill. and moved down right there in, into Genoa, Nevada. So and it's beautiful there. It is. I'm very, very fortunate. Very fortunate. And there's a lot of history there. I understand you're a member of several boards that have to do with historical I, preservation. Yes, I am. I mean, somehow I got roped into them. But, you know, in all honesty, um, because I love, you know, history, and I get involved in anything about history where I live, um, I eventually, you know, and I'm, I like to be active in, in whatever I join, and, and being on a board, um, you know, it takes dedication, but you have influence, a little, maybe a little bit more influence than, you know, than an average volunteer, and that's not to take away from volunteers, but yeah, the Lake Tahoe Historical Society, which is at the south shore of Lake Tahoe, and then in Carson Valley, we have the Douglas County Historical Society, so I serve on their board. And the National Pony Express Association, which is dedicated to the history of uh, the very brief venue of the Pony Express, um, I serve on their board. And also in Genoa, we have a really wonderful group of people, uh, not, not to say that the other people aren't wonderful, but um, the Friends of Snowshoe Thompson Association, and uh, that helps keep the history of Snowshoe Thompson alive. So I'm very honored to serve on all of those boards with wonderful people. I was especially intrigued by Snowshoe Thompson, and many of our viewers might not know what he did. Can you tell us about Snowshoe? Oh, I'd love to tell you about Snowshoe Thompson. He was known as the Mailman of the Sierra, and, and uh, there's lots of ways to look up his entire history, but just very briefly, there was a need in uh, 18, around 18, 
in the early 1850s, around 1856-57, um, to get mail from Placerville over to Genoa. And they had a terrible, terrible winter. And he signed up for the job because uh, in Norway, when he grew up, when he was a small boy, he got around everywhere on what they called uh, snowshoes, or we call them skis, but they're like 10 feet, and they, they you know, referred to as longboards sometimes. But anyway, for 20 years, he carried the mail back and forth between Placerville and Genoa, and you know, in the worst of winters, on his back. And uh, I like to call him a gnarly Norwegian because uh, he accomplished this without uh, without having to have any extra blankets or anything to pamper him when he had to spend the night. It took him three days to get from Genoa to Placerville because of the grave. Two days to get back. And uh, he eventually settled in Genoa and became a rancher you know, out by Diamond Valley, married a Genoa woman, had a child, and he did other things. You know, he was a minor. And uh, passed away in 1876 of uh, pneumonia and later, two years later, figured out it was really appendicitis. But he's buried. And in the Genoa Cemetery, you can visit his grave. Many people do and honor him. I know we talked about the fact that he got from Genoa to Placerville and back without GPS. Without yes. That. Yeah. How Never did he got do that? Well, I think, Colleen, that to, in today's world, we have so many electronic devices, and we have cars, and we have you know maps that are commercially printed, and GPS, and all that that we just kind of follow that. But back then when they didn't have buildings and street corners and references, people, especially the pioneers, were much more in tune with getting around by landmarks, the stars, the sun, the direction, you know, directions. Um, they follow they follow that like we follow a regular map from AAA, you know. Another thing that I was intrigued by is the fact that you're a part of the Pony Express and maybe even riding a portion of it this year. Yes, I hope to ride a portion of it this year. And yes, there are no known women riders back in 1860 and 61, but that's, that's when it operated for 18 months. And that had to do mostly with the fact that uh, the war between the states was coming. And we were kind of an island out here from you know, what they called the old states. West of the Mississippi, the settlement, you know, from from California and over into uh, Nevada territory was isolated. And so to get, they had to find a quicker method than 25 days, which was by stagecoach at that time. You know, the telegraph was being built, but it, it wasn't connected yet. And so they came up with an idea, these three freighting, um, these three gentlemen that were part of a freighting company came up with an idea to get the Pony Express horses relayed with the riders, you know, 10 days from St. Joseph, Missouri to San Francisco, oh and vice versa simultaneously. And so eventually, like I said, it lasted 18 months. Uh, it was the Telegraph that put it out of business, but along about the 1970s, a group of uh, men in, in California, around Pollock Pine, sat down and said, you know, the history and the trail is disappearing. What can we do to keep it alive? And so they formed the National Pony Express Association. And at that time, only men could join because they wanted it to be authentic. But the men were all like in their 50s and 60s and weighed over 200 pounds. <laughs> and uh, the original uh, riders were young men who were average 20 years old and weighed no more than, you know, than about 120 pounds. So eventually, women, who are the majority of horseback riders, you know, in this mm -hmm. day and age, right got in there by saying, well, there were, you know, there may have been no women riders, but there were no men riders of your age. And, and today we have, when we do the rewrite in June, because we reenact the whole thing in 10 days, we have over 700 participants, several from other countries, and the majority of them are women. And what distance do they go? Oh, there's an average, depending upon where we're riding, mm -hmm. which we try to follow the exact trail, Sometimes it goes through cities, and here in Nevada we have most of the original trail that we can ride on. Um, anywhere from two miles about to five or seven. It depends on the skill of the rider and the need and, and the terrain. Right. Yeah. And the whole trail is? 2,000 miles from, yeah, between San Francisco, or between, excuse me, Sacramento and St. Joseph, Missouri. So it takes that many riders to relay. And we have a mochila, just like they did back then, that has mail that actually you all can send oh my gosh. a letter that via Pony Express today. Yeah, that would be great fun. Yeah. Another uh, thing that happens in Genoa is a ghost tour. Oh, yeah. yeah. 
Can you talk about that? I sure can. Uh, in the audience, we have our friend Sandy Lene, who uh, actually started it. She's to blame. But Sandy, you, I'm sure you've seen you know, shows here on the Community Access TV. She has her own show, Psychic uh, Creations. And she's been a guest on my show, Western History Live, and, and on my on your show. But she's a, a psychic and a paranormal investigator. And she's one of the founders of a Thin Veil Investigators, based here in Carson City. And I ran into her during a ghost walk when I was a docent on a Carson City ghost walk. And I was intrigued, and so I asked her some questions, and she helped me learn how to investigate. And eventually there was an opening, and, and she invited me to join the team. Well, after that, um, I needed to start a business and didn't want to, you know, do a clerical job like I'd done all my life. And so she and my significant other, Doyle Harris, uh, encouraged me to start a, a walking tour business, but a ghost tour business, oh, because good. we had uh, investigations that she had been on in Genoa. Mm -hmm. And so we knew of uh, real hauntings and paranormal happenings there. And it's just expanded over the last three years. And we generally run it May through October. It's a walking tour, it takes about two hours. And uh, there's a lot of history in Genoa because you mentioned that, and it's it's the oldest settlement in Nevada. It's on the Pioneer Trail, so you can imagine everything that's happened there. Okay. And Sandy uh, can join the tour when you know by request, or you know we have special tours that we take special groups on, and she helps. Um, when she's not there, I can identify what she's found and, and what what store owners and business owners have found, because the stories just keep you know keep coming to us. But um, when she's there, it comes firsthand. She can tell people how she discovered this and or identified that when she was doing an actual investigation. Oh, so it's, it's fun. It's two hour, two hour, beautiful two hour walk through uh, Genoa. Even if you're not into the ghosts, um, the history is wonderful. The buildings are beautiful. So Absolutely. we've been able to tailor it for an entire family. Actually. Oh, that would be great. Yeah. So you got to come on our tour. I will. Come we'll on get Sandy tour. to come. There you go. Okay. <laughs> And you also have a Cobweb Palace production? Well, I'm a partner in uh, that production company business, and uh, my partner, Lisa Bomarito, has a background in, in theater and stage, you know, community theater and stage, and um, costume. Costumes. Costumes. Costumes are gorgeous. And so we so far have uh, produced one play together, and it's always going, to, whatever we do is going to be history based. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, the one that we did last year, we're going to do a little bit of it again this year, is called uh, Women of the Wild West. Uh, Eileen Bowers and Julie Oh, very good. So I'll let you know when, when it's playing again. And the women's suffragettes, have, they, have you? Yeah, well, I'm doing something with the Douglas County Historical Society, um, celebrating the 100th anniversary of the women's right to vote in Nevada. And uh, it's called uh, 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 Women in History, and it's March 22nd. But um, I get to portray the Lady Virgin Finnegan, who until I get to portray her at this event, most people only associate her with the beginning of the candy dance in Genoa in 1990. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Wow. And the candy dance has been how many years now? Oh, it's in its 94th, 5th, I can't, well, since 1919, and I'm not good with, you know, counting quickly. So it's been since 1919. It always happens the last weekend in September. And there are a couple other events that go on in and around that, like the Peddler's Fair at the Dake House, which mm -hmm. Sandy's involved in, and at um, uh, La Ferme Restaurant. Usually, uh, Gilles has something going on there. And at the White House Bed and Breakfast, Phil Stoll has a crafts fair going on there. So there is so much to do that weekend. There certainly is. And yeah, starting from just trying to raise money for streetlights oh. to be electrified in 1919. And anything you can tell us that's going on with the uh, Lake Tahoe Historical Society? Are you ha planning any events this yes, summer? Yes, we are. Now, we don't have an exact date yet, but by the end, probably like one of the last uh, Thursdays in July, we're going to have a Chautauqua Festival. McAvoy Lane will be involved. He plays Mark Twain, so a lot of people know of him. Um, I'm going to portray a character, Steve Hale, who usually portrays Snowshoe Thompson, might be involved. We'll have some headliners. So I'll keep you posted on that. That would be wonderful. Yeah, and that's going to be a lot of fun. 
And how can people reach you? Do you oh. have a website? Yeah, I, well, I have a website. Um, if you're interested in Genoa Historic Ghost Tours, you can get a hold of me at, uh, well, at any time by calling at me at 775-220-0605. My email address is info at Genoa Historic Ghost Tours. Dot com, so there's two T's there. Uh, the website that I have is uh, Genoa Historic Ghost Tours. And um, Western History Live, I don't have a specific website for that, but everything that I've mentioned, I have a Facebook page for too. So if you're interested in anything to do with you know, the TV show, if somebody out there thinks that they might have a good premise for the TV show, that would be good. Or if they want to know where we have some uh, you know, Western History Live performances going on, you just call me or, or oh, email that would be me. Wonderful. Yeah. And the TV program again. The name is is Western History Alive, and it's on the same Community Access TV channel. And that uh, Western History Alive is basically focused on um, sharing history uh, through a cre creative way of, of performance, mm -hmm. or the show itself is blending the history of the past creatively with its relevance to the present. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. Is there anything else you'd like to touch upon that we have missed oh, that I, people should tune into with you? Oh, I just think follow, um, if you're interested in the paranormal, which the paranormal is history. These people have gone before yes, us, they and they help have. us put, put together some of the puzzles to the pieces when, say, Sandy and I go on an investigation, or our group goes on an investigation, and we know some history about the place, and, and when we can make contact with somebody that's there, a lot of times, twice on my tour, my tour has been enhanced by being able to put pieces together. Right. And then eventually finding out that, yes, that was the truth when we were able to find more printed information. But anyway, I would just like to say, if you're interested in the paranormal or history, um, I can put you in touch with several different people that can help you with that. That would be fun. And thank you for having me on your and show thank today. thank you so much. It was very nice meeting you. I thought you said your shop is wonderful. I'm going to go shopping. To watching your program okay. as well and oh. going on your ghost tour. Well, you're welcome and I'm going to be catching more of your shows too. Oh, thank you. Congratulations on starting your show. Thank you. And once again, thank you for joining us at Bridger Mountain this morning. Um, Kim Coppell. Mm -hmm.